Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about block diagrams with the Z-transform. So they're looping back to block diagrams, a topic we talked about early in the semester when we first came to difference equations. Today we're going to see how uh, having the Z-transform in our toolbox is a, a powerful new tool that makes these much easier to deal with. Again, the beautiful feature of the Z-transform turns things involving time delays that can be complicated to analyze into algebra problems that are much more direct to analyze. So let's switch over to the whiteboard and see how this is going to work. Okay, so for block diagrams, remember thinking back, there were three pieces. We said any difference equation, any linear constant coefficient difference equation, oh, so I should be careful about that. All right. So being careful, any linear constant coefficient difference equation can be represented by a block diagram. And we saw earlier in the semester, there are three elements to any that we need in our, our sort of Lego kit of, to, to make any block diagram. Pause the video for a minute and go think for yourself, what were those three elements, if you can remind yourself or review, and then we'll see how they, get, they show up in the Z-transform. So the first one was scaling by a constant. To have those constant coefficients, we need to be able to scale something by a constant. So this block says that if I put x of n into it, the output is just a times x of n. The other, what was the, the next one was uh, adding, an adder, where I can add two signals. All right, so I represent those by a little circle with a plus sign in it. If I have x1 and x2 are the inputs, then y1, y of n, the output of that system, of that block, will be the sum of the two. And the third one was a delay. Right, so for the delay unit, we put x of n into the block, and what came out the other side was the same signal delayed by one sample. What we're going to do today is a little different, though. We're going to change that for using recognizing the z-transform property. If I take the z-transform and each of these blocks, the first two don't really change, that, that I get the same thing for each. But for the delay, it is a little different. So let me write in the z-transform for each. So for, for the first two, that's pretty direct, right? I just take the z-transform of both sides, and it's linear, so it's still a times x of z, oh, it should be x of z up here, not x of x. And then x1 of z, x2 of z just get added, and it, since it's a linear transform, they add here. The big change is in the bottom box, where when I take the z-transform, instead of a delay, we're going to write this saying, well, I know if I have x of z over here, the output, when I delay by 1, for the z-transform is the same as multiplying by z to the minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this box now. As z to the minus 1. So in a block diagrams for z-transforms, We'll use this z to the minus 1 to remind us it's a delay, since that's the z-transform property. So those are the block diagrams we'll make for z-transforms. Basically the same idea, just replacing that delay box with a d with a z to the minus 1. Let's see how that works, and let's makes our life easier solving for, for a block diagram to, to find the output. So let's uh, go to the next page. I have an example ready. So we suppose we want to find h of z for the causal system below. So we have this system where we feed x of n on the left side, We've got uh, some feedback here with adders, scaled by minus a quarter and an eighth. Some feed forward, just scaled by one or two, and then the output. And again, we've got this chain of delays, sort of a spine of delays running down the middle of the system. The key to solving this is, is defining the right intermediate values for the nodes, and then using those to solve the, equa the, uh, the overall equation. But it's much easier to deal with them because everything is just algebra when all those delays become z to the minus one. So for the node, I'm going to, the main node that's important for this example is I'm going to label this middle node W of Z, so the capital W of Z. My input is X of Z. My output is Y of Z. Remember, in, in trying to find H of Z, we're trying to get Y divided by X, right? We're trying to get Y of Z over X of Z for the system function. And so if, if this node is W of Z, we know that what comes out here is z to the minus 1 w of z, right? It's just been delayed by one sample. And then the output of this bottom box right here, this output would be z to the minus 1 times that, giving me a total of z to the minus 2 w of z. 
right? So now I can just follow these these nodes through to see where how to get things written in terms of other other pieces. So if this was this node here is z to the minus one w of z, this box scales it by two, and I have two z to the minus one w of z. And then over here I have this node here would be one uh, minus one quarter z to the minus one w of z. And this node down here would be one eighth z to the minus two w of z, right? Because it takes its input, which is z to the minus two w of z, and scales it by an eighth. So this branch here. And so what I have coming up this side is the sum of those two, which is minus one quarter z to the minus one w of z plus one eighth z to the minus two w of z. And so now, looking at this, I filled in all the inputs to these adders and these adders. So I can sort of make two equations. Maybe I'll see if I can fit them down here in the bottom right so we can still see the diagram at the same time. Right? We can say this output, y of z is the output of an adder up here. What if I sort of use my highlighter? This y of z is the output of this adder that has two inputs, one of which is w of z, and the other is 2z to the minus 1 w of z. Right, so y of z is the sum, and this of w, w of z plus 2z to the minus 1 w of z. And this is where that intermediate variable becomes important, right? That we've, we've now got a way to write y of n in terms of, of this intermediate variable w of z. And you say, well, how am I going to find w of z? Well, that's the other adder right here, right? The output of this adder is, is what we labeled w of z going through, and it's the sum of this, this branch and this branch. So this branch is x of z, and this branch is this big complicated expression over here. So I can write w of z in terms of x of z plus things for itself. So I have uh, minus one quarter z to the minus one w of z and plus one eighth z to the minus two w of z. So now I can solve these equations to get y in terms of, I can get, uh, solve for w of z in terms of x of z, and then plug that into the first equation to get y in terms of w and x. So I'm going to uh, copy these over onto a fresh page, uh, and then we'll solve the equations from there to get h of z. All right, so working on this fresh page, I'm going to first, I'm going to solve the bottom equation first to get w in terms of x. So to do that, I'm going to move all the w's to the, the left-hand side. So I have w of z plus one quarter w of z to the minus one w of z plus one eighth z to the minus two w of z is equal to x of z. And then next I'm going to factor w of z out of the left hand side. So I'm going to pull it out in front, similar to what we did on Fourier transform properties. Okay, so when I do that, Oh, I just found an algebra mistake. Sorry about that. Let's go clean that up. This, when I brought this one eighth to the other side, to the left hand side, this should have become a minus. And the same thing down here. Right, so I have plus a quarter minus an eighth here. And so uh, I can now solve for w of z in terms of x of z, right? I can say w of z is x of z over 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 1 minus 1 eighth z to the minus 2. Right, so I brought this over to the right-hand side. So now I have w of z in terms of x of z, and I'm going to take this expression for w of z and put it in up into this first equation. Though I'm going to factor the w of z out first. So let me rewrite that first equation now. I'm going to bring this equation down here and rewrite it. Okay, so I've rewritten it in this form, and now I can plug in for the w of z here. I'll substitute this equation into the, the bottom equation, and I'll get an x of z 
and then a fraction of the other two. Right, so when I write the fraction like this, it gets, you know, I get this, this down in the denominator underneath. This is my h of z. It's pretty clear to see by now. If I divide both sides by x of z, I'll get uh, y over x, which is h of z. So let me make some room and then do that. Right, so this, if I divide both sides of this equation, this was y of z on the left-hand side still. So I uh, divide both sides, I get the h of z I'm looking for, which is y of z over x of z. And that will be 1 plus 2z to the minus 1. 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 1 minus 1 eighth z to the minus 2. So I now have h of z. To find the region of convergence is again a place where I use properties. I go back to the previous page and I see, oh, I was looking for a causal system. Right, right here, causal. So that tells me the ROC is outside the largest finite pole. So to figure out what the R region of convergence is, I now need to take this denominator and factor it to find the poles. So let me take a moment and do that offline, and I'll be right back with the factors. All right, so putting it in factored form, what I get, that the denominator is 1 plus a half z to the minus 1 times the quantity 1 minus a quarter z to the minus 1. And so looking at those, the, uh, the left-hand one, this is a pole at z equals minus a half. And the right-hand one is a pole at z equals a quarter. So the outermost pole is this one with radius at minus a half is radius a half. And since the ca a causal system is outside the radius of the largest pole, the region of convergence for this will be bigger than a half. Okay, so there's... Uh, Following it through using the algebra lets me find the, the z-transform directly from uh, the block diagram using algebra properties, not worrying about the delays, <clears throat> and, and solving for that. So I, if I wanted to take this further, I could go to a difference equation as well. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, sure, I'll do that here. So Because that's pretty straightforward. Let me pick that up on the clean page. All right, so to turn this back into the difference equation, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the same thing, which is uh, the common denominator. So I have x of z times 1 plus a quarter z to the minus 1 minus 1 eighth z to the minus 2. And then the same thing on the right-hand side. And so now when I go through this, I can... can uh, cancel cancel out one term on each side. Right on the left hand side, I'll do this in red because that's always more satisfying for canceling things out. I cancel out the x of z's. On the right hand side, I cancel out those factors. And so when I rewrite what's left, I get this. On the left hand side, I have y of z times the quantity 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 1 minus 1 eighth z to the minus 2. And on the right hand side, I get I get x of z times 1 plus 2z to the minus 1. And now the next step is I distribute that y of z through all the terms on the left-hand side and the x of z through all the terms on the right-hand side. And when I do that, I get this. I get y of z plus 1 quarter z to the minus 1 y of z minus 1 eighth z to the minus 2 y of z. And so, uh, and on the right-hand side, I get x of z plus 2x of z minus 1 times x of z. Now I'm just about home free. I just use, I take the inverse z transform of each side term by term. So y of z becomes y of n. This becomes one quarter. z to the minus one y of z is just y of n delayed by one. And then the last term similarly is one eighth times y of n minus two. And on the right hand side I get x of n plus two x of n minus one. So we can see that block diagram turns into this difference equation. If I back up, right, this block diagram that we started with here, move it so we can see the input clearly too. We found by working through Z transforms very directly, just doing algebra step by step, has this uh, has, has this difference equation describing. So it makes it simpler without having to worry about how to manage all the delays and things. The Zs just do that for you algebraically. All right, so that's all for this time. I'll see you in the next video.